Good morning. We're now officially started. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. For saying good morning. Good morning. Um, okay, so where did we leave off yesterday? Don't forget screen. Don't forget to flap your arms. Open share tray. There is. Do you see it? Hello? Yes. Okay. Yes, we see it now. Okay, nice. Sick. All right. <coughs> uh, yeah, so we had this little bullet boy uh, yesterday. It goes like, wing, 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 and then it stops when it hits the ground, though. So I thought a good next step would be to. Um, someone's microphone is really loud. Oh, sorry. Probably mine. That's okay. So I thought it would be a good idea to make it so we can actually shoot this guy. So we can be like pew pew. We're like, oh, we're we're a first person shooter. Pang pang pang. Do that. So I thought we would be able to spawn them from the player. I thought that would be cool. A uh, neat mechanic. Um, right. Okay. So how do we do that? First of all, we should probably handle like button inputs for when we want to shoot. So we should probably have some sort of event on the player for when we press the left mouse button or the trigger. So let's go and add that to the product settings. So I'm just going to go settings, product settings. Uh, input, there it is. And I add a action mapping that is shoot. Very creative. So we'll set that as the left mouse button and I will also add the right trigger because it's always good to add gamepad support. So it says trigger access, but this will actually only trigger when you fully press down the uh, the trigger. So when you map the trigger to an action, it will be a binary. It will be treated as a binary button, so it will be uh, like down or up and nothing in between. But when you bind it as an axis mapping, then we'll actually get the value of the trigger. So if you want to have like half hold in, fully hold in, and so on for maybe like a car uh, racing game or something. Uh, so yeah, it can be mapped to both actions and axes. <coughs> Does it trigger when you fully press it down or when you begin to press it down? I actually don't know. I think it's when it's fully pressed down, I would guess. But I actually have never okay. looked at the code for when it does trigger. So it might be like when you begin. I, I would assume it's some sort of dead zone. So maybe it's like when it's like yeah. 0 0.2 or something down. But oh, okay. I don't know, maybe we can look at it later. Um, also, I realized yesterday when I was editing uh, the videos that we went for like one and a half hour without a break. <laughs> so I'm going to be a little bit more aware today to take breaks. When I get into a flow, I like sort of forget that breaks are a thing. So also, please feel free to remind me if you're feeling like you're feeling sleepy and you're feeling hard to concentrate. Just like shout out, like, can we take a break? Uh, like, it's not rude at all. Just like shout it out. And then I'll say, oh, okay, cool, good point. And then maybe I'll just finish the sentence and then we can take a break. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, don't uh, don't be shy about that those sort of things, because I easily forget. All right, cool. So, um, so yeah, let's map uh, let map the fire button then. So I will go into player. Oh, I haven't remade the solution file yet, so I have to. Uh, maybe it's time to do that. Yeah, let's remake the fucking. Let's remake the the project file so I can actually search for everything. So we're going to fuck. Do you guys remember how to remake the project files? Um, it's, let's see, if you go back to the uh, fuck folder. The fuck folder, yeah, good one. Uh, right click the U project and then generate Visual Studio project files. Exactly, very good. Very, very good. What happens if you just delete them? And then <coughs> open the solution? Sorry, what do you say? What happens if you just delete the uh, body files and then open the solution? I don't or know, actually. Generate them? Let's okay. try. Because that was gonna be my guess, but then maybe I would have bricked my project. Well, you won't break a product. Actually, deleting... Because uh, all of this uh, stuff is generated in the folder Intermediates. So Intermediates is a folder where it sort of generates stuff. It generates uh, generated code, 
generated header, but also generated project files and stuff like that. So if we actually nuke this, it will say like, oh, it's open up. So we'll just close down with your studio. I'm guessing it will say like project cannot be loaded. That's my guess what's going to happen. Let's see. So I'll open up fuck again. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Yeah, there we go. There was problem opening fuck predictable CPP. Like it's it's being scared. <coughs> and if I go into solution explorer, it will say that like UE4 is unloaded and the fuck is unloaded. So it's just kind of confused. Uh, but it's very easy to fix. All we do is just regenerate. This is actually a very common thing we do at work, uh, where like if <laughs> if it starts acting up weird, like you know it's not compiling and we're getting really weird compile errors or just weird behavior in general. Like for example, when we're updating the engine version, sometimes it would just completely stop working. Then it's like ah, oh, just nuke intermediate, regenerate and recompile. That's just a general thing we do sometimes when things aren't acting up like we expect them to. So nothing dangerous with in nuke in the intermediate. It's uh, Sometimes it's what you have to do. Uh, how many folders are like uh, mandatory? Is it just the intermediate that you can nuke, or is it? Are there more? Because uh, in Unity there are like three folders that you need, and the, <laughs> the rest you can just like delete, and it will generate them again. Uh, yeah, the 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 ones you need is the one I included here in the in the zip here. So you need source because that's the source code. Script is for Angel script. I don't know why this is here. This shouldn't be here. So at least re nuke that one. But yeah, you should uh, use a script folder if you have an angel script. It was automatically created for me, and I'm not using an angel script version of the engine. Why is it? Same oh, here. Yeah, same here. Oh, uh, maybe that's for Python then. It might be for Python in that case. Uh, so maybe Python goes goes in script. Uh, I haven't worked with Python at all. So it's gonna be source. It's gonna be saved. I think. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be saved. I'm actually, okay, I'm going to be say I'm half sure about saved. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, source saved, intermediate you can nuke, derivative data cache you can nuke, content is very important, and config is important. But all the other folders can either be auto-generated or like in binaries that's compiled. So when you start the engine, it will ask you to compile the binaries and then you just do that. Okay, cool. However, if you're going to share this with level designers who do not have the source code, who does not have Visual Studio, um, or I wouldn't say they don't have the source code, they don't, just don't have Visual Studio, don't have that set up, then it's very nice to include binaries for them, so they don't have to recompile and, and download Visual Studio all the time. Like, they just want to open the engine, so then it's nice to include binaries for them, uh, yeah. so they don't have to do that. Yeah, so that's probably something we want to set up for, like... When we do perforce and stuff like that, I guess. Yes. So yeah. you would do it so they have the binaries folder synced in perforce, but you have that sort of always checked out. <laughs> so it's like you yeah. can always change the files in here uh, for testing and stuff. But but yeah. So usually, like in uh, at Hastelight, uh, we have like two different repros. We have one repro for programmers and one for level designers, <clears throat> where we have, you know, intermediate everything that's not in our source tree at all. We just sort of push code and then we have a build machine that's like a separate server that when it when it detects that we push new source uh, source code it will build the binaries and then push that automatically to the level designers uh, repo mm. so we never worry about having to push binaries or anything that's hand that's handled by an external server but uh, but yeah so it's quite a quite a setup anyway. but, uh a oh. uh, uh, quick question, like mm -hmm. uh, regenerating the project from now you did it from just clicking on the Unreal project, but you can like refresh the project files from within the editor as well. I think you Is can. Is that yeah. like the same thing, basically? Yeah, it's the same thing. It just, uh, okay. I mean, you can do it from just like command line as well. It's just like a command uh, yeah. on the project. Uh, okay. So, because cool. I, I just, uh, I thought I'd set that to like a <clears throat> shortcut in the editor so you can just like refresh it on mm. control r or something and just get uh, get it new. okay cool mm. that's a good idea so yeah now since i nuked intermediates i'm gonna have to rebuild everything 
So now you can see it's building 19 actions with six processes here. So, uh, and that's because all of the object files and all of that stuff, all the build stuff is an intermediate. So since I nuked intermediate, I'm gonna have to rebuild the whole project, but it's only 19 files, so it's not that bad. It's another thing when your code lead tells you to nuke the intermediate of the engine, and then you know it's gonna be a, a long morning of compiling. A couple thousand files. Oh, this is not good. Oh, all right. So the reason this is happening. <coughs> I name is start program, blah, 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 blah. Uh, UE4 EXE. So this probably means that I have the wrong startup project set is trying to you it's trying to start the um, unreal for uh, unreal exe instead of the our projects and if i go in here i see that yeah i have ue4 here set as a startup project so i'll just go down here and select fuck instead so i'll just do uh, set as startup project there you go because that's the project we want to start i'm not sure why that why it doesn't start at all with ue4 uh, like I, I assumed starting ue4 would you start the engine that would sort of make sense. Uh, I don't know. Not sure. Okay, maybe I should fucking remove that actor. <laughs> this is one er actor that's just like giving me fucking errors all the time. I should nuke these guys. Let's get out of here. We're done with you. Okay, there we go. I'll save that. All right, cool. What so was that? What was that error, by the way? I think it was like our uh, we had the little uh, actor, like the cool actor we were working with, and we were sort of working with it and changing attachments and stuff while it was in the engine while we were sort of playing and stuff and i think that mm -hmm. messed up the attachment order of the components on this particular instance so that's why oh. we got this error every time it loaded because like this one was cursed uh, okay. so i sort of nuked it um because we were hot compiling stuff i, I don't, why is the bullet on here oh maybe not, i didn't save or anything yeah i, I probably didn't save yeah because it was just on all night Alright, so anyways, let's drag in the fuck projectile here, let's see if it still works, let's simulate, yeah, there we go, it still works, fantastic. Alright, so where were we? Yeah, okay, so we have the input here, the input action that I just added, and we want to trigger some sort of function when this shoot button is pressed. So we will go into fuck player. And here where we ha have all the axes and action bindings, I will just add another action binding. So that will be shoot. We will bind it to IE pressed and we'll call some function. Handle shoot. I'll do handle shoot input, it's probably good. Go, so I'll make that make that happen there we go so now we have our function and uh, you know first order of business always log to make sure it works I take one step at a time shoot pew pew there we go top back into the engine and compile
For some reason it's taking forever. Hello? Ah, oh, finally, okay. Ooh, I fell asleep for a second. Okay, so anyways. So now if I start, I should, when I hit left click, yeah, it says shoot pew pew. And then use the double check. If I hit the right trigger, then I also get the log. So great. So now we have an action mapping that's doing a shoot. Cool. So how do we spawn something? Um, well, spawning is not that hard. We just call a function called spawn actor. Never mind. That didn't exist. I think it's on. Is it on the world? I think it might be on the world. Yes. Okay, it's on the world. So we have to actually get our world. So a world is just the. Um, it's not the level because there is a, uh, there is a thing such as a level. You can see the world as sort of the game going on right now. So ev for every game uh, instance you have, there will be one world that contains all the actors in the world. It contains all the levels that are streamed in and uh, stuff like that. Um, so that's what you can sort of see the world as. And then we get the world. So get world, we get the world that this actor is in. So we'll get sort of its owner world. And then on the world we call spawn actor. So it has a bunch of different versions. Um, maybe we'll do this one. So this version, okay, so we have a, it's a template. So we can put in a, uh, a type here to spawn a specific, a specific type of actor. But then the first parameter is a U class pointer. All right, so the use class pointer is going to be which type of actor to spawn. And the reason it does that, even though it has a T, is that it's sort of assuming that you're going to spawn actors that might be blueprint types. And obviously you can't put blueprint types insta inside of the template here, because uh, they're not strongly typed. They are generated like in the engine. Um, so you would have to pass them in as U class pointers to spawn a particular blueprint type of actor. Uh, and then the rest is just like transform. So that's where it's going to be, where it's going to be spawned. And then this one is F actor spawn parameters, which I don't know. I don't really know what's in there, but maybe we'll have a look. Um, okay, so let's spawn just a projectile then. So uh, we will include the projectile here. So it will be fuck projectile. Where did I put that actually? Is it in the root or is it in the player folder? It's in the player folder. Okay, cool. Uh, so I will include the projectile and then I will just put it in here in the templates. So we will do a, a player projectile. No, not a fuck projectile. That's what it's called. And then for the class, do you guys remember how to get the class of uh, of an actor in the in code? So I want to get the U class pointer to this actor, this A fuck projectile. Do you guys remember? That uh, ampersand, or am I wrong? <laughs> ampersand. Oh, you mean like star? No, and. And. The shift six. Or did I remember correctly? I mean like this? Yeah, I'm wrong. Uh, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, this makes sense. I, I see where you're coming from. But unfortunately, no, this just doesn't work. We need to get the U class pointer from for this C++ class. There was a I'm assuming it's a dot col static class. Yes, there we go. It's actually colon colon static class, but yes, it's static class. Cool. Very good. So now we're saying, okay, spawn this actor and the U class pointer is gonna be just this A fuck projectile. And hopefully this should make you wince a little bit. This should be like, oh, something feels weird about this. Uh, we will see in a why in a moment you might be feeling that way, but let's just do this for, for naivety's sake, just to see what happens. 
and then uh, for the F transform, so an F transform is just like a position, a rotation, and a scale. So it's saying, okay, what's the what's the transform of this new projectile gonna be? And we will just pump in get actor transform. So we'll just say, okay, you spawn it at the player's position uh, with its with the player's rotation and everything as well. Cool. So, um, so yeah, maybe you can predict what's gonna go wrong here, but let's see what happens just for for education's uh, education uh, value. Okay, so let's play. So if I shoot, it goes pew pew. So that works. I'm not seeing anything. I mean, I would expect to see this guy, right? But I'm not seeing anything. Let's check the the world outliner here to see which actors are spawned. And actually nothing is spawned. So that's kind of weird. Um, let's try and compile again. <laughs> maybe it's one of those things. Or maybe they did something else wrong. Yeah, let's try again. Oh, okay, there we go. So now something happened. <laughs> oh, okay, so I'm like... So I'm okay. So now I'm still not seeing anything, but every time I shoot, I like jump up on something. It's like oh, I get like launched upwards. So we have two bugs. We have the bug that we can't see them, and we have the bug that when we shoot, I'm like sort of getting launched upwards. Um, so first things first. Can someone explain to me why aren't we seeing anything? Why isn't it uh, this triangle or this cone shape? Because that's not a default mesh set in the co in the code, so the code doesn't specify how it should look. Yes, very good. What would we need to do to uh, remedy this to make it look like this? To use the same as this. Either you can uh, reference to a blueprint. I don't know if you can do that, but otherwise you can uh, do the way that you said that we were not supposed to <laughs> add meshes. That is the forbidden way. Yes, I would say that's a very good idea uh, to reference the blueprints. I think that's a splendid way to solve that problem. Very good. Can someone explain to me the different bug, or the sorry, the second bug? Why are we sort of being jerked away when we shoot? It's respawning the uh, bullet inside of the player, which means that the collision is going to push the player forward. Yes, exactly. And why is that? Like, uh, why? Why am I stopping when I'm hitting this? We only we did a sphere component, right? So why are we being uh, pushed away by a sphere component? Because, because it's unstuck. Correctly, we set it to be a what's it called? V blocking layer. Yes. That's block good. everything. That's right. We set the collision profile to be block, uh, block all dynamics. So even though it is a sphere component. Uh, it will still act like it's a solid sphere. Uh, so that's why we, the player is getting pushed away, and that's why the player cannot walk into these spheres. Uh, yeah, so what's happening is we're spawning inside the player, and the player will try to try to de-penetrate away from the sphere. It's realizing that it's um, inside of another collision shape, so it will try to just get it out of there. And that's why we get this jerky motion of just like snapping upwards. That's the de-penetration uh, getting us out of there. Uh, Fantastic. So let's solve problem one first. Uh, so we obviously don't want to spawn the C++ version. That's what I was like, okay, we should kind of wince at that. Like, okay, we the C++ version is kind of incomplete. It doesn't have a mesh set uh, and so on. So how would we do that? Um, so we might want to have some sort of property on the player some sort of property on the player to set this U class. So instead of setting the U class as a just a static class of a C++ uh, actor, we want to have so, sort of be able to reference a U class that points to a blueprint type. Um, we have sort of touched this before. Do you guys remember what would be a good variable type to hold a U class for a, a blueprint type? We've sort of briefly looked at it before. 
You guys remember? Uh, taking for right now, sir. Maybe some type of U component? Yeah, uh, it's a good guess. A, a uh, a, what's it called? A fuck projectile pointer. Uh, that's also good, also good. Uh, not quite what I'm looking for. Do you guys remember in the game mode? Do you remember what the properties in the game mode was? Because do do remember the game mode had a bunch of class references. It had a reference to like which uh, player controller to spawn. It had a reference to which player character to spawn, which pawn, and so on. What type was those variables? Do you guys remember? A pawn? Mm, no. Yeah. Or it was, yeah, kind uh, of, but it was something more. It was more than just a pawn. It was surrounded T by something. T subclass of. Yeah, there we go. T subclass of, baby. So, so yes. So if we had something like a, um, uh, a fuck projectile pointer. Projectile class. What would this... What would this uh, this variable point to? Uh, a fuck projectile instance. Yes, it will point to an instance of an a fuck projectile. That's true. Uh, that's why we wanted to not point to a particular a fuck projectile. We wanted to point to like a class of a fuck projectiles. We wanted to point to a sub class of that. Uh, not to a particular instance itself. This is a meta, <laughs> sort of like a meta pointer or something. So that's why we use the T subclass of. And then increment that, amounts. Hmm? But that's still, um, um, that could still be a blueprint, not necessarily like the C++ class, I if we do like a AFOC projector. Yes, exactly. So this T subclass of, it can either be a class, it could be a fuck projectile itself, like the base class, but it could also be any derivative of a fuck projectile, even if it's in right. blueprint or if it's in code. So, right, yeah. yeah, makes sense. So you can see it as any child of a fuck projectile, even if it is in blueprint. Uh, so that's very, very good, very handy. So we will do that, and then we will set, instead of the static class, we will use the enter. Whoops, we will just enter the projectile class here. So what we do here is that we say spawn actor of a fuck projectile. So it will sort of return a pointer to a, a fuck projectile. But it will spawn whatever this U class is pointing to. So we can sort of spawn a BP version of a fuck projectile, a deep BP derivative. But we will still get a pointer back of the base class like AFOC projectile, which you can do with inheritance, which is very nice. You get a pointer to the base class, uh, even though it's actually like a derived, uh, a derived child. Cool. So uh, this seems pretty good to me, I think. Whoops, I hit shift F5, fuck. Uh, so do you have a forward declaration to uh, a fuck projectile in the uh, header? No, that's a good point. We should probably do that. Let's see if I get a. Let's see if I get a. Get a get a warning here. Hopefully it does. If it doesn't, I'm a little very scared. Okay, good. Okay, so okay, so this is a really weird one. Now we're in fuckplayer.gen.cpp, so that's not a good place to be. <laughs> like if you get an error in here, that means something else is wrong. So let's not go there. Uh, it's saying like T subclass of no appropriate default constructor available. Okay, so that's kind of scary. Uh, but it's fine. The reason we're getting this is most likely because the a fuck projectile is not defined, like you said. We haven't forward declared it, so we're getting these super fucking weird errors. Thank you, C++. You're so helpful <laughs> for, because this a fuck projectile is not defined. So we will use forward declare it. There we go. C++ being a very friendly language. Okay, there we go. It seems like it compiled now. Let's see. Yes, okay, good. Very nice. So let's F F5 this bad boy. 
And yes, this is an important note to make. T subclass of works with forward declared classes. So that's a very nice thing to note. You don't need to include something to use T subclass of. It can handle forward declared. That's very cool. All right. So it uh, should be good now, right? So if I play and I shoot, we get a warning here. Spawn actor failed because no class was specified. That's kind of weird. Can someone guess why we're getting this error? Uh, oh, oh, go ahead. Because oh, uh, we have a reference to something, but we haven't said it to anything yet. Yes. And it knows it's supposed to spawn a some type of projectile, but it has no idea what that it actually is because we yes. haven't given it a value. Very good. Very good. So, so yeah. So we haven't given that a value yet. Uh, even though we made the T-step class up, we actually have to set it to something. Uh, so, um, so to set this, we're gonna have to make. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to make a bleep BP version of fuck player, which in the end we're gonna have to do anyways to add less stuff like a scale mesh or something if you want to do that. So we might as well do it now, just to be able to set this default projectile classes. Because again, we can't reference BP assets in code. Or we can't. We can, but it's ugly. Uh, so it's better just to make a BP version, just so we can set this property to be something. So I'm gonna make a BP version of player. So I'll just go into content blueprints, and I'll make it actually a player folder here. Make a player. I'll move the fuck projector into the player here as well. And then I'll make a blueprint class, and I'll override from fuck player. Call it BP fuck player. There we go. And now we can actually get a nice look at our player for the first time as well. See what's on it. It's a capsule, very nice. You have the had the thing here that we won't talk about. Uh, we have the character movement with all the billions and billions of uh, thingies. So okay, so we want to set the the T subclass off. So if I go to class defaults, it should show up here somewhere, right? Is there any reason to think it won't show up here? Because uh, we haven't you... set it to a new property. Ah, very good. Very good catch. This is uh, just a straight up variable. We need to make it a U property for it to actually show up in the engine. Very good. Like that, right? That should work. We want to edit it ah, anywhere as well. <laughs> we want to make the mistake. But yes, you are right. <laughs> why is it not showing up? Uh, projectile, why? Why? Okay, so why is it showing up? Okay, go. Why isn't it showing up? Go, Marcus, go. Because <laughs> it's not set to be either visible or editable. There we go. Very good. Uh, what do we want? We want visible, right? We want it to be visible, right? I think we want edit. Yeah, totally. Why do we want why do we want edit over visible? Because we actually want to change it. Yes, exactly. We want to change it. So that's why we want to have edit anywhere. Does that make sense? Would you guys say maybe try something else? Is edit anywhere good? Maybe we should try doing edit uh, defaults only actually. Because, like, this doesn't really make sense to place out a player in the level and change the projectile class. This is something we kind of want to set once in the default and then be like, that's what it's going to be. You can't just change it in the level willy-nilly. So I would say this is a great time to use edit defaults only. So let's do that, just because we haven't actually used it yet. Uh, what if you pick up another gun? We won't talk about uh, that. I, I, okay, <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> broke it. What if you want the gun that shoots another gun that then shoots it? There's one gun. <laughs> one gun only. <laughs> no, yeah, that's a great point. Okay, so here we go. So now it's actually visible. 
So we want to set this to five projectile, right? Right? No. No. Oh. BP. BP Hell yeah, dude. That's why we did this whole thing and in the first place was because we wanted the BP version. And now let's play, baby. So if I shoot, uh, nothing happens. Still nothing. Failed to. No class was specified. But we did it. Did you save and compile the blue blueprint? Yes, it's saved and compiled. Uh, have you put in the blueprint in the scene, or do you still have the old one? Uh, which blueprint? The player. Ah, very good. Good question. How do we know? How do we set which player should be... Um, how do we set that? How do we set which player should be the default one? In the game mode? Yes, in the game mode. Very well. And we did that in C++, remember? In C++, we had our fuck game mode. And here's where we set the default pawn class. And now immediately we run into problems because we wanted to override a BP version. Uh, so immediately this failed. Uh, so we have to actually override that in blueprint. We have to actually make a blueprint game mode to be able to set this blueprint fuck player uh, as, uh, as the, our default character, our default pawn. So I'll just make a... Okay, I'm gonna just override our fuck game mode base there. So I'll just override that in blueprint, make it a BP game mode. I'll just call it fuck game mode. And then in here, we can go in and set our default pawn class here. So instead of fuck player, we're gonna set that to BP fuck player. Here we go. And let's play. And still nothing. Why is that? Compile? I'm assuming you already did that maybe in the blueprint. You need to actually set the game mode. Ah, very good. And where do I do that? In the in project settings. Yes, very good. Project settings, maps and modes. And here we still have the default game mode set as the B uh, C++ version. And of course we want to set that to be the BP version. So now we should play and... <gasps> Amazing! It's actually spawning the correct dudes. How nice. Okay, let's take a 10 minute break to just like sort of appreciate what we've done here today. Appreciate the magic that is programming in Unreal C++. And then uh, I'll see you guys back at 11 and we'll start tackling the second bug of being uh, launched up like this. So, see you guys soon. See you soon.